Ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus here this morning. I'm out here in the open space in my camera. It's just a telephone, and I'm actually in a graveyard. But I've chosen this spot because there's a lot of peace out here, and there's a message that I want to give to you that would bring peace to some of you that listen. Here's a sign that reads, Michael Jackson, and it has 44951212014. I don't know what that means, but the inscription under it, it says, to the world, you are one, but to one, you are the world. I'm going to ask you to bear with me a moment, ladies and gentlemen, as we share all of these wonderful brothers and sisters out here, perhaps old and young, who if they had another chance, would they say, let me come and do it again? We don't know. But I want to talk about some things, ladies and gentlemen, that I think you should know. Now, I'm going to try to say this in a short kind of way because I know you don't want to be in the graveyard all day. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to know the truth as it has been given to me. Now, my sister always tells me, she says, uh, if you're going to talk to the people, talk to the people in a kind, nice way. You know, treat them like they're individuals, intellectual, intelligent, you know, and uh, respect them as you would want to be respected. But don't scream at them. Don't yell at them. Don't make them seem like you're trying to fuss, like you more than they are in relationship to what you're trying to say. And I understand that, ladies and gentlemen. I get mad, too, when people are hollering and screaming at me. I got mad when my parents hollered and screamed at me, even though they knew exactly what they were doing. And they didn't care what I thought, as long as I got the message. Now, my sister would say, well, the message was not gotten. It was defeated because people rejected it simply because I screamed. Well, I'd like to say to my sister <laughs> and to all people who think like that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. The truth is there whether you think or don't think. One day you will face up with the truth and that will be the time for you. And hopefully it will be a time when you will wonder if I had only known. And when you say that, if I had only known, I want in the back of your memory to be that but there was one guy that brought it to my attention and I just rejected it. That's what I want you to be able to say. I want you to be able to say that I tried. You see your pain and your suffering. Oh boy, here I go again. Let me ask you something. What is the Bible for? If I ask you that, have somebody ever asked you that before? What is the purpose of the Bible? Well, what does the Bible do? It tells you about what someone has said about doing a time about. And so if somebody asks you, what is the Bible for? It is to tell you about someone about a time about. That's what the Bible is for. But if about is in you, well, the Bible is a little late. In fact, it's the after fact. Even in it, it says that the story came about spirit. There was no book. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying to you today in a short form is this, that God is a spirit. I want you to know this. I'm not telling you a lie. I'm telling you this because I want you to live. God is a spirit. And I'm in a graveyard. Look at that on the ground. Look at that. Let's see. Look on the ground. Now, sure, we, man, they dug these holes out here in our earth that was made, not by man. They put this tombstone out here on earth that was made, not by man. Look up there, look up there, you see that? It's a little cloudy day, it's a wonderful sky. Wanna tell you something? Man had nothing to do with that. Something did, someone did, some power did, we don't know, so it had to be a spiritual cause we can't see it. But we know it exists, why? Obviously. So what happens? We allow that spirit, the most powerful spirit that we can't even see, we pull it, allow it to live in us and become a representation of that spirit. But how do we know when that spirit is, more, is, is progressive and moving in a positive direction? Because that spirit, my friends, works for one and it works for all. Now, 
I'm not going to get too deep in this thing because I could. But I'm going to tell you another thing. Now, this is going to blow your mind. But I'm going to tell you anyway. Your mom, your dad, your grandmom, your granddad, and all the way on back there, and even your children, and your parents, again, those that have passed on, you go to the graveyard, man, you can read some of the best, the most wonderful, sweetest stuff ever. But I want you to know, for those of you who think your parents are in heaven, they're not in heaven. No, they're wonderful, loving people, but they're not in heaven. And I'm going to tell you bluntly why they're not in heaven. Because I don't care how wonderful you say they were. In the sight of God, they weren't fit to be there. Now, let me tell you something. Do you recall the world that you came from? Well, no, you don't. Well, the most recent world that you came from was your mother's womb. That was a different world, ladies and gentlemen. That wasn't this world. That's when you find yourself in the world, but not of the world. No, that was a different world. Then you're here, in this world. When you leave this world, you are going to another world. And you are going to another world where the education that you need to bring you where you need to go will be given to you. Just like it's being given to you today. That's what will happen. Now, somebody say, well, who's in heaven? Well, I heard somewhere in my spirit that says there is no greater love. And that's what it's all about. It's about love. And there is no greater love than that any individual will give up their life. Just lay it down for the life of another or for the life of the world. Where would one like that go? That one can be trusted. That one can be trusted to do the work of God. That one has made a decision that God is. And because God is, they refuse to allow the devil to have any control over their lives. Now, when I say devil, I'm not talking about some folk red. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about your ambition, your ego. No, I'm not going to trust God. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if I got anything well. I might not have anything on me at this moment. But what I really wanted to show you was a dollar bill. I want to show you a dollar bill. Those of you, if you got a dollar bill, imagine it if you don't. What does that dollar bill represent? In America, in the world, that dollar bill represents food. It represents clothing. It represents shelter. It represents education. It represents health care it represents cars and planes and travels and vacation and anything you want if you got it but what happens if you don't have it what happens if you don't have it you don't have any food no clothing no shelter no education no health care no life you have nothing so the dollar means something, but what is the dollar all about? Where does the dollar come from? And what else is the dollar used for? Well, it's used for the things that it does. To be God. Those who authorize the dollar. Those who make the dollar, distribute the dollar, determine who gets the dollar and how much they get, when they get it, and how often they get it. They are playing God in your life. So that's just why, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you that your folks are not in heaven. They accept the system. You are not going to heaven as it stands because you. You accept the system. You think that the dollar is it. You even think that God made the dollar. And you think you're going to take that stupidity to heaven? No way. God loves you, child. But you're going to get, the, you're going to get it together. This is a, a trip for... Per, 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 let me say it again. Don't tie my tongue up. This is a trip for perfection. A trip for perfection. What you see here in this graveyard is not new. It comes and it goes. And everywhere it comes and it goes. And it's going to stop one day, maybe, when we are free. That means when we got it together. Ooh, our time is going to run out. I better cut this baby kind of short. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know 
What I just told you about that dollar, that's the world's way. That's how it has captured you. That's how it has captured every last one of us. Now, when I say you, I'm talking about me too. You see, as the saying goes, to the world, we are one. But to the one, we are the world. So I am the world. I am all of you. I am all of you. And I'm not talking about the dead. I'm talking about you now who are watching this. I am you. And I know the joy. I know the peace. I know the freedom. I know the prosperity. I know the freedom that I desire. And so do all of you. And when all of us are being denied, all of us are not receiving it, then it's pain. It's responsibility. It's duty. Something to take care of. And this is the business of God. This is the business of love. I just want to take a little bit of time, ladies and gentlemen, to say these things to you because I'm really hurt. I'm hurting so bad it's a crying shame. I'm seeing people die. I'm out in this graveyard because I'm seeing people die all the time. And I know you pain. I see you stealing. I see you ripping people's cars off, breaking in the buildings. I know. And the people trying to say, you're bad. Yes, you are bad. Why? Because you're living in a bad system. You're living in a system that has created you. You're living in a system. That has made you a drug addict. And you're living in a system that makes you have to break all the rules. You're living in a system that designed you to do exactly to you what it's doing. You had to...